Hi everyone, I'm Ian Levy, Technical Director for the National Cyber Security Centre. Welcome to this Cyber UK session on quantum technologies. Quantum covers a lot of different technologies, from quantum computing, post-quantum cryptography, quantum key distribution, quantum sensing, quantum imaging, and quantum timing, and a whole bunch of others. All of these technologies could have cybersecurity and national security implications in the long term, and all will certainly have huge effects on our economy. Even before a quantum computer becomes cryptographically relevant, which we'll hear about in a minute, it could have impacts in personal pharmaceuticals, materials design, and a huge number of other optimization type problems. These could give the UK a huge advantage if we capitalize on them properly. But that obviously means being able to protect the intellectual property, the companies, and the people involved in that from hostile intent. The UK is actually a world leader in quantum technologies, and I don't use that phrase lightly. Today, we're going to have a look at a couple of key areas. Michael's going to start by introducing the UK's quantum ecosystem, with a particular focus on quantum computing. Joanna's then going to talk about the impact of cryptography, followed by Harpreet talking about the trusted research products which we recently published with a CPNI uh, to help people understand how to protect research. And then finally, Brian is going to talk about how the UK is looking to balance security and foreign investment in the future, as I say, to protect those companies and that research better. And on that, over to Michael to kick us off properly. Thank you, Ian. So let me begin by giving a brief overview of developments in quantum technology in the UK. And I'll start the story back in 2013, when the UK government announced an initial investment of £270 million over five years to establish a national quantum technologies programme, the NQTP. The vision was to create an entire new technology sector, a coherent and organised community of academic, industrial and government partners that would work together to give the UK a leading position in quantum technologies globally and ensure that the UK became a quantum ready economy. Phase two of the NQTP, which runs from 2019 to 2024, will further accelerate the move from research towards development and commercialisation of quantum technologies. And by 2024, the combined government and private sector investment in the UK is expected to have grown to around a billion pounds. The NQTP network in the UK is built around four hubs, each with its own technology focus and arranged around a lead university with a supporting network of partner universities and businesses. The hub at Birmingham leads on developing quantum technologies for sensing and timing applications. York leads on quantum communications, Glasgow on imaging, and Oxford on quantum computing. There's also plenty of activity outside the umbrella of NQTP, and there are many other universities and companies around the country undertaking their own R&D programmes. The National Physical Laboratory, also plays a key part in national activities and within government, many departments and agencies, including, of course, NCSC, are fully engaged with the National Quantum Technologies Programme. Now, the quantum technology that is likely to have the single largest transformational effect on UK prosperity and security is quantum computing. You've probably seen press stories about the potential power of future quantum computers, about quantum supremacy, and about how in years to come, quantum computers might revolutionise machine learning, simulation of physical, chemical and biological processes, and might solve many important and complex optimization problems. And there have been many articles about quantum computing as a potential threat to national security and the internet. So with all this in mind, in November 2018, the government announced another additional targeted investment of £93 million to create a UK national quantum computer centre. The mission of the NQCC is to help build quantum readiness in the UK. Its main goals are to establish a trusted authority and centre of excellence at Harwell, to become a central focus for the rapid development of quantum computing in the UK, and to catalyse the UK supply chain for the emerging quantum computing sector. And like everywhere else in NQTP, there's also much other independent quantum computing research and activity across the country and a growing number of UK-based companies. So what is NCSC doing in all this? Well, NCSC and GCHQ 
are founding partners and advisors for both the National Quantum Technologies Programme and the National Quantum Computer Centre. We undertake our own independent technical research, applying our years of experience and expertise in cybersecurity to these emerging new quantum technologies. We advise industry on secure innovation practices and the development of technical standards and assurance and accreditation schemes. And we participate in cross-government discussions on investment and growth for the UK quantum technology sector. All this activity means that NCSC is kept fully informed of the state of the art in quantum technologies. We can disentangle the hype from the reality and we can then offer pragmatic cyber security advice to government and business. And we've already issued a number of white papers on quantum security technologies. So what do we think about these headlines about quantum supremacy and quantum computing as a potential threat to national security and the internet? Well, good progress is certainly being made in the development of small scale quantum devices, which are sometimes called NISQ devices. However, these are far too small and too limited to pose any direct threat to the sorts of public key cryptography that currently secures real world networks. And the consensus among experts in the field is that the development of large scale quantum computers is still extremely challenging, very expensive, and will probably take at least another decade. Moreover, this potential future threat from quantum computers is by now well understood. Security experts have been working on quantum safe or post quantum mitigations for many years now, and technical solutions are already being developed and standardised. You'll hear more about all this from a colleague in the next section and more about our white paper, which discusses the quantum safe mitigations that are being recommended by independent security experts. So there's no need to panic unduly about any immediate threats from quantum computing. However, this is a good time for us all to start thinking more seriously about how to future proof important national and business critical networks in the UK. In addition to developing those technical mitigations I spoke about earlier, there are also many practical issues to consider around how current networks should be upgraded to incorporate quantum safe cryptography, including aligning those system upgrades with the development of quantum safe standards, products and services, while minimising costs and infrastructure changes. And there are also many wider business issues to address around how best to grow and protect the emerging UK quantum technology sector. And another colleague will discuss how we can protect investment while fostering secure innovation in the UK. So to recap then, a quantum ready economy is one that can take advantage of the opportunities presented by quantum computing to achieve benefits to society, national prosperity and security. NCSC are fully involved in preparing the UK for many aspects of our transition to becoming a quantum ready economy. We can offer informed and independent expert advice on research and technical developments, on best practices in secure innovation, standardization and accreditation, and on protecting companies and investment in the UK. So there's lots to be excited about with quantum computing, but don't believe all the hype and don't panic unduly about any imminent threats to security. Thank you. And now I'll hand over to Joanna. Thank you, Michael. So in the previous section, Michael talked about how the growth of quantum computing may pose a threat to the security of the Internet. I'm now going to explain this threat in a bit more detail and then discuss the technical mitigations that we recommend. So the security of nearly all Internet communications today is based on what's called public key cryptography. Public key cryptography offers two principal functions called key agreements and digital signatures. And taken together, these two functions can be used for two parties who have never previously met to initiate a secure channel to communicate. This is crucial for the security of the internet. 
Because, for example, as users, we want to be able to browse to new websites securely without having had to agree a key offline with that website beforehand. The security of all the public key cryptography algorithms that are widely used today relies on the difficulty of solving two mathematical problems. These are called integer factorization and calculating discrete logarithms. We call these problems hard problems because they are known to be difficult for conventional computers, so the computers that exist today, to solve quickly. And this means they provide long-term security against attacks that can be run on today's computers. However, in the 1990s, it was shown that an algorithm called Shor's algorithm, running on a quantum computer, could solve both of these mathematical problems, so both integer factorization and calculating discrete logarithms, easily. And this is because quantum computers aren't just more powerful su supercomputers, they perform calculations in a completely different way. And this means that these two mathematical functions cannot provide long-term security against attacks that can be run on quantum computers. However, the quantum computers that exist today are not the kind of computers that you could use to run Shor's algorithm. Quantum computers that exist today are relatively small and suffer from relatively high error rates in each calculation they perform. This means that they're limited in the types of computations they can do, but nevertheless, they are already starting to find important applications in quantum simulation and quantum chemistry. By contrast, a quantum computer that could run Shor's algorithm would need to be much larger, larger with much lower error rates. We call such a quantum computer a large scale general purpose quantum computer. There are many technical challenges that need to be overcome before such a quantum computer could exist. Mathematical ones, physical ones, and engineering ones. It's impossible to predict with confidence exactly how progress towards a large scale general purpose quantum computer will evolve. However, although such a quantum computer does not exist today, information protected with public key cryptography today could be stored and decrypted by an attacker with a quantum computer in the future. So for information that requires long-term cryptographic protection, a quantum computer is a relevant threat now. It's worth bearing in mind though, that the high cost required to do this would mean that this sort of threat model is only really relevant for very high value information. Quantum safe cryptography is the name given to replacement public key cryptography algorithms that rely on different mathematical problems. So not um, calculating discrete logarithms or integer factorization. And these different mathematical problems are believed to be hard for both classical and quantum computers to solve quickly. Both key agreements and digital signature functions can be made quantum safe using these mathematical problems. And these new functions can be plugged into existing secure networks and protocols. For this reason, NCSC believes that quantum safe cryptography will provide the most effective mitigation for the quantum threat. An international effort to design and standardize quantum safe algorithms has been underway for decades. In 2016, the National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST, started a process to standardize quantum safe key agreements and digital signatures. And the draft standards from that process are expected in the next couple of years. This long period allows for thorough public scrutiny of the various algorithms, drawing on cutting edge research from experts in academia, industry, and governments worldwide. However, even once standards have been drafted, it will still be a number of years until quantum safe cryptography is deployed in major commercial products and services. Even so, the recommended course of action for the vast majority of users is to follow normal cybersecurity best practice and wait for the development of standards compliant products to transition to quantum safe cryptography. This is because there are other risks that come with early adoption of non-standard quantum safe cryptography. For example, the security level may be unverifiable or the product may be unable to interoperate with future standards compliance products. For national and business critical networks that manage their own cryptographic infrastructure, now is the right time to start thinking about planning for a transition to quantum safe cryptography. The systems that might be a priority for transition are ones which protect data with the longest lifetimes. NCSC can offer bespoke advice for organizations that need long-term cryptographic protection. 
In summary, NCSC recognises the serious threat that quantum computers pose to long-term cryptographic security, but this threat is well understood and is already being planned for. To repeat what Michael said, there's no need to panic. Now I'm going to hand over to Harpreet, who is going to talk about the trusted research work. This is a talk about Trusted Research, a joint CPNI product, which is the Centre for the, Nas- for the Protection of National Infrastructure, the UK's Government National Technical Authority for Physical and Personnel Protective Security. Trusted Research is about facilitating better conversations between industry and academia. It is a programme designed to help protect the existing system of international research collaboration. It's about integrity in the process. It, adv- it is vital to UK success and relevant to sectors such as STEM, dual-use technologies, emerging technologies such as quantum, commercially sensitive research areas. It sits alongside international research strategy from BASE and the international education strategy from Department for Education. It's about supporting international collaboration whilst maintaining confidence in the system. It's about collaborating in a safe way. It aims to raise awareness of potential risks to international collaboration from countries whose democratic or ethical values may differ from our own. It's about proportional advice which protects UK strength in international research collaboration. It's about making informed decisions and raising security mindedness. Industry contacts have raised concerns about the protection of their cutting edge research and development. Government is also increasingly concerned. In this year, there's in the last year, there's been a high level of incidents in cybersecurity attacks in this sector, particularly around but not limited to ransomware. This has led to both both ministers being briefed on the issue and NCSC providing guidance to the sector. Unfortunately, we know the sector still has limited awareness of the threat, although this is now improving. Trusted research highlights the importance of raising awareness of the potential threat, and this needs to be combined with an understanding of what you want to protect. So your research may be vulnerable to misuse by organisations and institutes who seek to who operate in nations whose democratic and ethical values may differ from our own. They may seek to increase economic advantage, have hostile intent, use research for military applications, use it to, to oppress political opposition. You need to consider whether your research is commercially sensitive. Does it have p- potential for patent? Is it related to sensitive defence or national security technology, have future dual use or unethical applications. The latter is quite key, so a piece of tracking software can be used to catch criminals or be used to track political distance. Staff and students may be targeted by hostile state actor, but equally you may also be targeted by academic institutions to undertake research, which is of a strategic benefit to that country. Staff may also be targeted through attending conferences or research placements through cyber attacks such as phishing emails or links to malicious websites or infected attachments. So why protect your research, IP and staff? It's about integrity of the data, loss of IP, reputational damage. It's about reducing the impact of your research, potential theft, misuse and exploitation to mention a few. So what can you do? You need to identify your sensitive, vulnerable research. The first step is to have awareness of the potential threat and the needs. this needs to be combined with the understanding of what you want to protect. It's about due, due diligence. Consider When considering a new research or funding collaboration, this should include ethical, legal and national security considerations as well as financial. Checks do not need to be high level with security agencies, they can be simple. Open source checks via via a search engine. Look at what research they've published. Do they have any military links? What What are the human rights records of the country? It is all about thinking, what do you need to know about your potential research partner? You will then have all the information needed to make an informed and balanced decision whether you want to work with them or not. It's about looking at conflict of interest. Be aware of potential conflicts between your research and funding partners. Be open and discuss your security arrangements and their security needs on a regular basis. It's about being transparent with these arrangements. Trusted research looks at access control. 
to provide assurance. What access do they have on your system? What parts of the network? Have you got thought of ag- segregated access and how do you manage this risk? It's about sharing appropriate to the platform. And finally, it's about reputation and the reputation of your institution. This could be damaged if it will become apparent that your research has been exploited by the military for another country, for example. The impact, you need to think about the impact of social media. Just to recap, the key pillars of trusted research are know your partner. It's about making well-informed and pragmatic oversight over the benefits and risk of collaboration. It's about protection of sensitive and I, data and IP. It's about effective risk management. A key point is that trusted research is not about preventing collaboration, open research or knowledge transfer. It's about protecting your assets, your IP, data, reputation and ultimately the value and integrity of your research. Ultimately, taking a trusted research approach could potentially provide a unique selling point for for research partners who are looking for greater assurance around their research collaborations. Thank you. And I will hand over to my colleague, Barony. Thank you, Harpreet. So as mentioned, safeguarding the UK quantum computing sector is absolutely critical. And we know that having such a vibrant and world-leading ecosystem makes UK companies vulnerable. Therefore, it's really important that government helps in ensuring there is a safe and secure investment in the UK quantum computing sector. The UK uh, welcomes um, investment, both domestic and foreign. That is absolutely critical. And it presents significant opportunities for businesses to grow and expand its reach and expertise. But it's also really important that anything in the interest of national security is protected. In a minority of cases, Investing companies may use investment to gain access and influence, and investments can harm the company's interests or the national security of the UK. So some of you might already be aware that the National Security and Investment Bill was introduced to Parliament in November 2020. And the aim of this legislation is to give businesses and investors the certainty and transparency they need to do business in the UK while was also providing the government with powers to scrutinise and intervene in acquisitions of control or qualifying entities and assets in regards to national security. As part of this legislation, there are 17 defined sectors that have been identified that are most likely to give rise to national security risk. And as you might expect, quantum is one of these 17 sectors. Potential investors will be required to notify and receive clearance from the Secretary of State for certain acquisitions before proceeding. We know that this is a really big change, so government is here to help protect and help support. And you can find much more information on gov.uk about this legislation. But of course, investment is only one aspect of security. And we know that can be really, really difficult for some small startup companies, some who are really developing cutting edge technology in fields such as quantum computing, to think about and implement security at the early stages of their life as a company. And also, good security is a competitive advantage. It makes good business sense. So it's absolutely an investment for the future success of the company. So this is why we have developed our new advice, which is called Secure Innovation. And its guidance, again, jointly uh, produced with the Centre for the Protection of National Infrastructure. It provides guidance for startups and venture capital firms to understand what the foundations of good security looks like, with everything from password security to safely connecting to the internet to preparing for security incidents and expanding to new markets. So we're really excited that this new guidance will provide a holistic view of key security considerations from right at the beginning of in a company's journey right through to initial scaling up as a company grows. You can find this new guidance on the NCSC and CPNI websites. And I'll hand back to Ian for his closing remarks. Hi, everyone. Um, I hope that was a useful tour of the UK quantum ecosystem and the investment the UK government's putting into quantum technologies. Hopefully also an explanation of how the potential for impact on cryptography and what we're doing about that. And then the really interesting part around the balance between security and investment and how we help protect these early stage startups and academics from hostile intent. 
Uh, as you can see on the screen, there are a couple of links there. One is the NCSC, Quantum Technologies and Quantum Safe Cryptography White Papers, and the other is the trusted research that was referenced a few times, a joint product between CPNI and NCSC on helping people uh, to protect their early stage research and scale-ups. Um, we hope that was useful and we hope it was a good introduction to the quantum technologies in the UK. Thanks. Mm-hmm.